In this world, nightmares lurk. They hide in our neighborhoods, walk our streets, wear our faces. But they are not us. They are the world's best kept secret, and we are going to find them. Welcome to Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell. So, JD, I, tell us about your boyfriend. I guess. <laughs> but he's got very strong hands. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, just you know what to do with his face. <laughs> I, I'm really concerned. I, I just got JD killed. He's a biter. Yeah, I, you beat me to it. <laughs> Damn you, John. Uh, so uh, your vampire boyfriend is leaning in, but sadly in this system, he needs a separate action next turn to bite you. So it is Singer, the female hunter's turn at the front. And <clears throat> she is currently on the floor again. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> unconscious? <laughs> no. Singer's bad day. She is uh she is coming out of her unconsciousness from the taser. <laughs> I beat the shit out of this poor woman. <laughs> and she opens her eyes, Not lethally. grits her teeth, and she goes, Would you stop? Knocking me down! <laughs> taser again. <laughs> <laughs> She uh, she is not able to stand up this turn, but she sits up, glares at you over her eyes, and she goes, I am here for the fucking vampires. Leave me alone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to say to that, darling? Well, you know, I tried to talk to you. You really you brought this on yourself because I tried to be nice, but then you had to, you know... You uh, talked to Gregory. Don't ever talk to Gregory. Well, I just, you know, I assumed he talked for the both of you, so... Oh, yeah. sure. Let the man talk for both of us. Well, it's not like you ever said Darla, anything. Darla, shut up! Let's go! It's not like you ever said anything! She doesn't dignify that with a response. She just grits her teeth and picks herself up off the ground in her next turn. While all that conversation is happening, we're going to go through the initiatives again, starting with Mason. That is that is the most calm anyone has ever been after being tased. Yeah. Okay. She's, <laughs> she's a very mature individual. She's a fighter. It's what she is. <laughs> she also got shot in the chest with a laser beam. <laughs> um, that couldn't have felt nice. That was bad. Oh, shit. Well, then I we got to go get JD. Him. Now he's just gonna run away with his boyfriend, and then Michael's gonna have to get a new kid. Not doing very well. <laughs> we, we can all we we can always get a new paranormal guy. <laughs> can I? Good oh, luck with that. <laughs> I don't care if the elevator door closes because it's on the same floor. Can I yank out the the extinguisher and try and run over to spray? Lestat in the face. It will take you your whole action because it's 10 feet to the elevator yep. and then 10 feet back, yep. but you can retrieve it. Oh, yeah. I'd is like it, to get over there. Isn't Greg in the way? Greg I don't, I don't know what they're doing. It's, for the elevator, right? Well, no, Greg went oh, yeah, to Greg help her up. Greg started to leave. Yeah. Greg is helping sing that's her right, up that's right, right that's now. Right, that's no, right. no, he booked her for the elevator. I think he left her, right? He stopped where she was laying. Okay. Yeah. He is there now. And uh, he does not offer her a hand getting up. What a dick. What a oh. jerk. <laughs> I sense tension. Ah. That's why I know we didn't, he didn't achieve his uh, proper number on the daddy scale. No. So that makes it Vic's turn. Oh, shit. Um, let's see. Uh, at, at this point, I think uh, he's just going to try and grab Darla and light, like yank her towards the elevator. All right. Uh, I guess. Are you, are you contesting that? What do you want to do? Um, it's time to go. We should have done this a long time ago, Darla. Let's ski daddle. <laughs> I, I'm gonna allow him to drag me. I'm gonna clutch the gun to my. Oh, chest. thank you so much. Um, well, shit, I'm very strong, and I have no no uh, 
Like, I have no doubt that I could out grapple you. But, <laughs> but. We'll settle this later. I will let you do it. Uh, but I am going to shout, hey, maybe we should, we should, we should do something about JD. He kind of looks like he's in a predicament. He sure does. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't mean that. That was out of character. <laughs> nope, nope, that was sad. Uh, look at character. Okay, so, so look at fine. Uh, so lo- looking over, he, he uh, okay. Looking over at JD, does he see? Uh, he, he sees him like being held and just like is being about to be bit. Yes. Uh, trying to think about something I can just chuck. Because, I mean, like, that's an ancient vampire over there. I know not to, not there's to fuck the, with that. There's the broken apart pieces of a wooden chair in the middle of the room. Oh, oh that's still around? Yeah. Cool, that's what I was looking no, out for. No, the cleaning crew came in what? at the end of the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, janitors. The uh, undead janitors have really been scrubbing the floor. Okay, <laughs> then in that, case, in, that, in that case, Vic is just going to be like, I know that trope. And just, and is there is there a... Mm, cylindrical, pointed end, uh, like a very, a very uh, stake-shaped sort of part. <laughs> there is the leg of a chair which does taper down. It, it has a little plastic stopper on the bottom, but it would be simple enough for you, being the fit man that you are, to break it off and make a stake. I mean, are you gonna javelin throw it? Is that an arm on? <laughs> is it big Kick. enough for me to <clears throat> javelin throw? In a before stake? this hits me. <laughs> I mean, you can certainly try. Your boyfriend will have to save your life. Garrett, How? though, I feel like I feel like you have to do one or the other. So you'll either have to grab me and drag me. Yeah, exactly. Or or yep. grab the chair leg and stake them. I'll say I'll say you convinced me, and then he's just gonna go. So and, you're just gonna drop me on the floor. I w- I wasn't like lifting you. I was just tugging you. you I, I'm I'm prone. I'm pretty sure, or at least partially. I don't think I ever stood up. So I think you'd have to literally drag me across the floor. Oh, okay. So here's how it goes. Vic is just like, come on, get up. We gotta go. And yet, and you're just like, JD needs help. Oh, you're right. Drop. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then you Darla will remember. Darla will remember. <laughs> Darla will remember. <laughs> Darla will remember. <laughs> and I'm then, writing it in my notes. Uh, and uh, Vic uh, runs over to the splinter chair, grabs a uh, grabs a piece that looks cylindrical and like usable for stabbing, and. Is is he close enough to uh, to JD to like run over and try and like? You certainly could. Jab it. You certainly could try and stake him from the back. He is not looking at you. He is not paying attention to you because he's going in for a bite. Let's go for it. Yeah, shake I, him. I would recommend going for the heart. Yeah, yeah. Th- th- thanks, thanks. Because this is one of the vampires. Yeah, go know? solve another mystery, Matilda. So this will be a uh, strength and whatever is your best of athletics, brawl, or weaponry. Athletics, uh, brawl, or weaponry. Uh, really that would be think, athletics. Alright. I really think that was a bit uncalled for. What, calling you Matilda? <laughs> yeah, I don't like your tone. But you like Matilda. Yeah, she's cool as shit. Alright, cool. Since he's not very aware, I'm just gonna let you roll whatever's your best here. Fuck off. No. <laughs> okay, so that's two sixes and three ones. <laughs> You you hit him, you deal a solid blow, but because it is blunt, it's not a sharpened, like, proper stake, it simply glances off. This is a bomb. And, and, yeah, and he is he is a tough enough vampire, an old enough vampire, it doesn't seem to face him at all. And it sets off the alarm. <laughs> it does, however, get his attention. Um, yes, so that was Vic's rather mm-hmm. convoluted turn, making it Darla's turn. Yeah, sorry, that did take a second. Uh... Well, I've been just dropped <laughs> in a bunch of goo. <laughs> um, and then I saw him, I mean, fail to stake a vampire that wasn't even looking at him. So, so we're even? Yeah, good, good job, Van Helsing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, maybe what I will do. Um, so... <laughs> So Vampire Man, JD's boyfriend, man, uh, he is, I'm assuming, facing JD mm-hmm. with his back towards Vic, right? Yes. And so he's in some sort of, like, okay. Um, can I do a kind of running, maybe slide in their direction? 
um, and try and taser the vampire. Sure. Absolutely. So you get up. Well, what would I need to roll for such an uh, action? What you can do, mm-hmm. you can, because you are on the ground and you do have a substantial amount of space to cover, you can spend your whole round moving and then tase him next turn. Mm-hmm. Wait, or I'm... you could charge him. <laughs> Because charging uh, removes your defense, but gives you double movement. So you could make it all the way to him and try and knock him over physically. And then tase him once you have him on the ground. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds fun. All right. <laughs> what, uh, what so are yeah, you So yeah, you roll um, strength brawl and for the, the actual knockdown. But by charging, you just for free, whether you succeed or fail, you get double speed and you lose your defense for the next round to get to him and try to knock him down. Okay. Uh, that would be two. All right. Uh, you you get to him. You successfully uh, collide with him with the the mask of your body or your arms sort of a, a, around him in, in like a frontal body check, and uh, you knock him over. Consequently, <laughs> knocking JD over. <laughs> <laughs> And all of you land in a pile on the floor like dominoes. And that makes it... So do I taser my next turn, or...? Yes, the taser is still in your hand. Okay. Um, consequently, where's the gun? It's in my other hand. <laughs> Are you just dual-wielding <laughs> tasers mean, and I pistols? I have had a, this is, I'm not making this up. This is the whole time I've been like, t- taser's in the right hand. Wait, no. Taser's in the left hand. Gun is in the right <laughs> hand. That is, that is how I've been playing this the whole time. All right. Uh, so as you run, uh, Gregory watches you go, and he just says, not with my gun, and he charges after you. (laughs) (laughs) When is he gonna just bowl into us, too? It's gonna be, like, Well, but instead of, instead of charging you, like, bodily, he's charging you with the specific intent of kicking your hand with the gun in it to disarm you. Okay. So is he doing that after I've, I've hit the vampire bodily, or is this mid-slide? No, you, after you collide with him, his turn comes after yours, and he goes to try and take the gun from you while you are distracted. Okay. And might I add, prone. So he gets two free dice for that. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I did this to myself. Yes, you did. Thank you. Very much. All right. He succeeds. Your gun is uh, flies out of your hand and slides across the gooey floor to rest roughly in front of the female vampire's pod. And there's a musical in Chicago, like a number in Chicago. Um, they both reach for the, the gun, gun, the gun, the gun, the gun. gun. Uh, that brings us to Casey's turn, who conveniently was hiding in that corner. But the gun is off, so. And she reaches for the gun and arms herself. Oh, uh, yes. The gun, the gun. <laughs> She uh, stands there, stands up next to uh, Cleo, and her hands shaking, she raises the gun up, and she's looking and she's not sure who she's supposed to shoot at. Me either. Me either, buddy. Uh, Gregory stops and... uh, Even though you guys have only really been around these people for a few tense minutes... It's very, you already can tell that this is not a familiar position for Gregory. <laughs> he raises his hands very slowly in front of him and then over his head. And he says, now let's not do anything rash. <laughs> I thought the gun was off. And, well, Casey doesn't know that. Okay. <laughs> and Gregory's behavior seems to indicate that it is not. But she's shaking and she's looking at him and looking around. And she goes, you're with them, right? You're one of them. And Gregory says, no, we're a business partnership which funded the organization. We are not in leagues with. And she goes, but you're them. You put us here. And he goes, well, I mean, technically that was corporate. And she goes, I don't give a shit. Who signed the papers or who had the idea? You put us here. And let's see how she rolls. Oh, it. Get him. Kick his ass, baby. Yeah. 
<laughs> she rolls three successes. Ooh. She, yeah. looking at the three hammers in the back of this gun, selects one at random and pulls the trigger. And a physical heavy pistol round fires. Hmm. And catches Greg straight in the chest. <gasps> and he goes down. Oh, yo. And he takes Good. three lethal people. Dang. Oh, my God. He's going to go out like Biggie. I, I, <laughs> how much damage has Greg <laughs> taken? Well, luckily, <laughs> most of it has been bashing. Yeah. So he's taken a lot, but he's not <laughs> actually been, like, bleeding out until now. Which, by oh, the way, he is bleeding out. Oh, <laughs> well, hey, hopefully it'll be a juicier target for Mr. Sexy Yikes. Vampire Man. I'm pretty sure Reese is just going to offer himself up again. I do. Little juice box. And while all of this transpires, <laughs> you all are watching this happen from the pile at, 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 at over this vampire, watching it all take place overhead. And those of you, especially those of you in the heart of the room, have a very clear view of Cleo, the formerly feral girl, standing <laughs> now in front of the female vampire and looking up at her. And she very calmly starts running her hands over her, the top of her head and scratching violently oh, and no. pulling and scratching and scratching and pulling. And she starts to dig her oh, hands no. into the back of her skull. No, oh, I don't, I don't no, like no. it. Honey, don't do it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and you all in a pile on the floor are unable to do anything but watch as she slowly starts to injure herself in the back of her this head. Is the and blood drips down. The worst <laughs> slumber party. <laughs> oh. Meet new boyfriends. Um, and girl that makes herself. it Wolf's turn. Wolf is seeing yeah. all this, right? You are you are okay, few people I'm... still standing in this room, in fact. Okay. I feel like <laughs> he wants to do something, but he is terrified. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist or an occultist to kind of put two and two together here. I think I need to roll integrity. Sure. Yeah, if you figured out what what is about to happen, then certainly you do need to roll integrity. I have a guess, but I'd want to see what you're going to do. I mean, I'd rather not do it on screen, but if you guys stick around. <laughs> uh, with three successes, yeah, um, he definitely... He sees where this is going. Um, Christ, I think he's going to run. Okay. You're free to run. You're not grappled in any way. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. And, however, oh. uh, Reese shares your action. He also has eight. So, as you are taking the situation, you're it's dawning on you what is what is transpiring, and a, a gunshot is go has just gone off. You're terrified. You're afraid. And in the back, you see Reese, um, dash and attempt to uh, tackle Cleo to the floor. The, the girl who is tearing oh, no. her head. Oh, dear. He succeeds. Ooh. Um, he, he oh, good. He dashes for her. He puts his, his arm across her shoulders and tackles her <laughs> to the floor and indeed gets her by the, the wrist and, and pushes them hard against the floor. And he says, Cleo, stop! Cleo, don't! And she's fighting him with all her power, but uh, her thin and weak arms can only do so much against someone that much larger than her. And for the time being, it seems that this uh, this poor girl is uh, stuck where she is. JD, it's your turn. You so there's people on top of us. Yes. We're in a sort of horrible blood pile. <laughs> How blocked are my arms? <laughs> uh, I will say, purely from a mechanics perspective, it is your right this turn to break attempt to break the grapple he has on you. Okay. Which is a straight uh, strength brawl check between you and him. Okay. I've got to tell your man you don't play that, bro. Oh, no. What? Is there a... Oh, no. Was there a one in there? No. Okay. Uh, Maybe, uh, it, are you trying to, like, shame. push him off and then you kind of, like, present your ass? <laughs> no. That's if I had a one, dear. There was no one. But I will say he's... <laughs> 
Because he himself is being grappled. Uh, he is not really in a great position to be holding a grapple, so he's doing this at a negative two. So it's possible he fails here. He did not. <laughs> he wants you, JV. Uh, however, Sorry. the unexpected fall has prevented him from biting you. He is just maintaining his grapple uh, at this point. <laughs> Uh, that makes... Oh, well, never mind. It's his turn. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. But he has people on him? He has people on him. Oh, JD. Uh, we'll but he's out. also he really out. hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and he got himself a snack. Yeah, you know how it is when people are, like, <laughs> grabbing on you, but you still got those Cheez-Its in your hand. <laughs> Oof. Oh my god. Whoa. That's an eight and three. Oh, Rest in peace. You bit me real no. good. Oh dear. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's Where's biting you so super That's good, JD. An exceptional success. Oh. He is a biter. <laughs> <laughs> so, despite all that's going on, he is in a blood frenzy and he takes whatever is available to him. Oh my. His fangs <laughs> sink oh into your neck. And you feel the uncomfortable sensation of blood being pulled from your veins. And it feels good. Oh my! Oh my. No. JD's into it, no! It so feels strangely, <laughs> amazingly good. It's like every nerve in your body is tingling, and, and anything that hurt or that was sore... All the tiredness, the, the loss of breath you've experienced as you've run and climbed and exerted yourself all night just briefly leaves you, and you're in the most euphoric, relaxed, beautiful space in your own mind. Boner town. Boner town. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's Singer's turn. <clears throat> Uh, It'd be like a morning with boner, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do much with this, but it's here. <laughs> Singer uh, gets up and does not call for Greg, her teammate, who's just been shot. She, mm. in fact, very calmly steps directly over his body. Oh, shit. Whoa. And she actually goes to Darla. And puts an arm uh, on her elbow. She doesn't pull you up, but she she pulls backward and tries to get your attention. And she simply says, I don't want to hurt you, but I need to get at him. I'm assuming she's talking about the vampire man, right? Yes. Scary vampire yes. mix. Sexy blade. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh I think Darla's just gonna just like, hey lady, you can do whatever you want. I I, I mean, yeah, get that guy. <laughs> so so Darla moves of her own volition. Yeah, yeah, she'll she'll let her be pulled back. Cause fuck if I can do anything with my gun gone and my friend being bitten and in Boner Town. <laughs> Aw, dude, he's your friend. Well, and, uh, this guy that I know. <laughs> this guy that Aww. I met very recently. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't deserve that. And then she swings with her chain whip one more time. Well, oh, Reese came out of it, okay. Right? He's also got vampire in him. Right? All right. She hits. And uh, immediately uh, the vampire uh, extracts his, his fangs and is physically blown, not just off you, but into the wall through three tables, oh, feet shit. away, oh. and takes three aggravated. Three ash? Yes. So, wow. Can I get Good. a boner? <laughs> <laughs> you can if you work hard and believe in yourself. This is why people like shot in manga. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. He is still conscious, but he uh, has a giant, giant slash through the back of his torso. It's crackling with energy, and it's oozing deep, dark, almost black, congealed blood. Uh, and that brings it back to Mason. Well, I was going to blast him in the face, but... Uh... Yeah. Okay, so, right now, the <laughs> only thing between humans and escape is the female vampire nearby, in the near the canisters. At this point, um... 
Yeah, the, the, okay, the girl test subject with the gun, Casey, she does still have the gun, but her attention seems to be focused on the other hunters. Mm -hmm. Uh, The main threat, the male vampire, is now against the wall, bleeding aggravated damage, and all of the other test subjects are at the back with the female vampire on the ground. So, yes, nothing stands between any of you and escape at this time. I want to shout at Reese, get the girls and get us out of here. And I'm going to walk up to the female vampire who hasn't done anything yet and just hose her just hose her down. Just cover everything. Don't let her see anything. Just freaking... With the fire extinguisher. Just blast it. Okay. You can do that. Okay, and that's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the firearm skin plus intelligence, I believe it was. So he plus... Two, three. Let's see if the, the good spot works. The good spot does a critical fail. Ooh. Uh, you you fire it, um, <clears throat> but the uh, the the pressure in the canister. I guess maybe you're shaken or you're distracted. I don't know, but it it you kind of lose your grip on it and it sprays all over the place and gets in your own face and you're blinded for this turn. Uh, Vic, it's your turn. I'm gonna taste if you don't throw me medicine. <laughs> you, you almost managed to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, no, singer, <laughs> singer's over there trying not to chuckle. Uh, Vic, Vic is probably very surprised right now because where the vampire once was, it is not. So where he just went up with like the dull end of a chair leg and just went thunk. Is it? It's just gone now. And so, did I do that? No, he was. He's not. <laughs> he's not that kind of dumb. Uh, instead, uh, I- instead, he sees that. Well, shoot. There's there. There's nothing standing between us and the door out. Is Darla within arm's length right now? Yeah, Darla's standing right next to you. Who else is within arm's length? The people like pull. JD is laying on the ground beneath you, <clears throat> uh, a, a little glassy eyed and out of it, <laughs> but uh, seems to be all right. In fact, he's he's beaming. <laughs> at, at which point, roll for ten. So at, at which point, I'm gonna have uh, is it, uh, I'm gonna he's gonna shake JD and be like, hey, "Can you stand up?" And he's just like he's shaking the gla- the the glassy eyed. Am I conscious at all? Yeah. Yeah. At this point, no one is attacking you, so I'm just gonna do a temporary pause to combat, and we can just role play until such a time as someone enters combat again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, at which point, yeah, uh, Vic is gonna is gonna like. Looking around, just making sure that nothing's coming for him. He's just like, JD, can you stand up? I want to try. <laughs> can you I'll stand see, up? Is he physically can I able? Use my, yeah, you can get up. Use my legs and stuff? You're right. woozy, but you can get up. Okay. Vic is going to hold him steady, and then he looks at Darling and he says, All right, time to bail. Well, Wolf. Okay, Wolf, uh... So Wolf's out of willpower, and mechanically that means Wolf has kind of, he's spent emotionally and mentally. And seeing uh, this girl who's like 20 years old, the oldest, uh, she was going to rip her skull open. Like, he is convinced of that. Uh, He's in a panicked frenzy trying to find medical supplies down here. So... Yeah, I'll start. Should I roll for that? Jay's start stumbling to the elevator. <laughs> Where is Reese and the girl? Reese and the girl are in the back, still struggling. Reese is shouting at her, you know, inconsequential mm. things. Just, they're all placating, mm. you know, come to your senses. Please stop, don't do I mean, this. If it doesn't seem like they're doing anything, I'd like to shout at Casey. Mm-hmm. Casey, I don't know what the hell's going on. Get mm-hmm. them out of here. Casey she, is stunned. She's just holding mm-hmm. the gun. The gun's visibly shaking. She can't believe what she just did. She's almost hyperventilating. The gun slowly lowers as she mm-hmm. starts to panic. Casey, I just, look, I just shot someone. Look at me. You'll have to do it again if you don't come with us now. Get them out of here. Uh huh. And then I'm gonna try and. She looks, and for the first time, she notices Cleo and Reese. She goes, Reese, Reese, what are you doing, Reese? And he goes, she's, she's, she's going crazy. She's trying to rip her brain out. I'm going to spray Queen of the Damned again. Um, um, 
Um, I want to go over to to Reese and try and physically haul um, Cleo up and then drag them both out yeah, the door. All right, smart. she fights you all the way, but like I said, she is not strong as a person. She's easy enough for you to lift and haul away. Yeah, and Darla's just like, come on, honey, this is a really bad place. We need to get the fuck out of here. Uh, and, uh, uh, okay. And you all sort of, the situation momentarily diffused. You all are able to get up and, and some of you woozy, some of you, uh, a little bit half blind. You all managed to get yourselves up to the elevator. Uh, does anyone realize that Wolf is not with you? Uh, do you want us to roll a passive anything for that? You're welcome to roll it, or or just yeah, well, just I, uh, determine if your character if, is attentive. I actually, I, I did say I was going to move towards the door, but I don't think I necessarily move towards the door and I, directly if prodded to do so. <laughs> well, Vic I'm supposed is, to be like really Vic is with you. you. you uh, Vic has got you under arm. You probably wouldn't notice that uh, Wolf isn't there until he kind of like does like a mental roll call and realizes that. Uh, Wolf and Mason are not in the uh, are not in the elevator. Yeah, I, if I'm leaving and I'll wipe the shit out of my eyes, I'm I'm looking to see where everybody's at as we're trying to get out. So yeah, Mason, I'd say you and Vic, right as you you sort of exit the main room you've been in, and you have the option of doors ahead of you, you do realize that one is missing from your party. Okay, can I make an investigation something roll to just try and find? Number six, or wherever number five is. Yeah, I mean, it's not even really that hard of an investigation. You just have to make the choice to go and look. Yeah, so just try and get him so we can get out. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, Stephen, what, where is Wolf right now? Um, Wolf has gone back to the office of the doctor, the one who uh, did this to the kids. And he's just trying to find medical supplies. And he's muttering under his breath about how he has to find something. Maybe so, maybe he can find a Xanax. Maybe he can find something. He has to get something for this kid. Okay. Uh, so, Mason, you're you're looking around. You're peeking through the doors to the labs. And you <clears throat> find him very visibly in the center of the right-hand lab. As, as Casey's still shocked and, and horrified with a gun still in her hand, she says, The cells. That way. And she walks into the lab where um, Wolf is and, and leads you all into the office where he stands. Uh, is she trying to tell us to come with it? Yeah, she's, the party? she's not really doing a good job of it. She's pretty out of it. But she's walking with the, the sort of shuddering gait of a determined woman going into shock what in, is, into this glass in, encased office. Uh, what is Singer doing? Vampire stuff? You guys don't know what Singer's doing unless you want to turn around and look. Um, she is still in the in the dark room that you've all just left. Um, while I'm walking with Reese and Cleo toward the cells, following um, Casey. Vic is tr- going to be trying to get JD <laughs> to the elevator. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I, I feel like she knows where she's going, and I don't know where I'm going, mm-hmm. so I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow mm-hmm. her. Um, I'm going to cast a look back for Singer. All right. She's not visible. Uh, you hear from the other room a, a sort of pain grunt and a, and a, sh- a sort of sound of an impact, uh, as though the fight is still going on. Mm. Uh. Casey shoves her way through the glass uh, swinging door into this office, and uh, in the back there are two large bookshelves against the wall. She uh, pulls pulls one out from the wall, and uh, behind it you all see a small uh, door. And if you actually, now that you've noticed, you see the carpet underneath is is rough and and torn and and used. And she kicks open the small door and she uh, looks back and and Reese, now free of Cleo, uh, pushes past all of you and joins her and uh, runs through the door. Um, Is this close-ish to the elevator? Or is this pretty so far away? the elevator is down like a ten foot hall. There's a little atrium yep. with several doors. This is to the right of those doors. There's a, a fairly large uh, curved room, which is an office space. And within mm-hmm. the office space, subdivided is a small glass office with a desk. And she has just revealed a, a hidden door behind that desk. And 
gone through it about as quickly as she's capable of right now. And at that point, uh, Casey, sort of realizing herself, turns around and she goes, are you coming with us? She's -hmm. looking at you, Darla, uh, because you have Cleo, Mm -hmm. you have her friend. Um, And it's just me, me, Wolf, and and Mason that are in this room with him. Uh, Where? She looks at him and she goes, "Um, so uh, where, where does this go? Where are we going? Out, out. We have to get out. Where's this... Does it go back up? Does it go back upstairs? To or? the cells. The uh, uh, she's her brain isn't thinking right. She has to pause and think for a moment. She goes, "The what are the the east wing, the old building?" Oh hell yeah, let's go! I don't want to be down here anymore. The tunnels aren't safe. <laughs> we have to go to the cells. Yep, yeah, yeah, let's go. Whatever you want, lady. Uh, what about the rest of us who are over at the elevator? You all can mm-hmm. clearly see yeah. what's happening. It's, it's not that big of a space. Okay, and here. <laughs> so at that point, then uh, uh, I assume I'm just in Looby Dooby Scooby Land. Like you, you've pretty much recovered. Uh, it's like, are you good, bro? Do I feel anything different other than maybe lightheadedness? You, you're lightheaded from the lack of blood, but uh, you don't feel pain of any other kind. Other than that, I'm still mentally just I, like you, you're like still yourself. Pretty, you're not. Okay, I'm gonna run back. And I just I didn't know if there was any lasting effects. No, like a, doesn't seem to be. Well, if I we're going this way, exit. If we're going this way, I'm gonna run back and make sure JD's all right. Help him out, maybe. You're He's good? not thick with them, so mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, well then, if they're good, I'm gonna incidentally, since I'm in the neighborhood, go get my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, this since I'm here, you're you're that guy in the horror movie, in the handheld uh, horror movie, who's, who's just like, I gotta keep rolling. Look, I <laughs> need this rolling. for a reason. Okay, okay. I need the whole thing, so man. Everyone, uh, staggers their way through this hidden door, and you run back to retrieve your camera. Uh, only to realize it is still in the middle of this room in which uh, a battle is taking place between the female hunter with her her whip and uh, now the um, the man has gotten back up and uh, they're sort of locked in in a grapple she's not able to attack with her chain but he he is uh, also not quite able to to get uh, to her and, and do anything meaningful, and uh, you have an opportunity to grab your camera and run. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Let's just yes. I'm not going to tempt fate. I'm not going to do anything stupid. Just hey, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, that uh, Vic seeing that JD can stand on his own, just sort of like tentatively lets him stand up, and then just it's like okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, so you grab Excellent. your camera, picking up the rear. All of you go through this hidden door in the back of the office within the lab. And on the other side, you find yourselves in very similar caverns, although probably not where you've been before. And uh, you all walk out into the darkness. Um, well. I'm assuming most of you still have whatever lights you had before. <laughs> I have the light on my phone. Um, I, I think had, Darla maybe didn't have enough hands. There, yeah. there was a time when we were using my camera as light because we didn't have a light. <laughs> I had a flashlight at one point. I yeah. still very specifically yeah. had a headlamp. No, we, yeah, the, the headlamp is definitely off. safe. Right, we were I don't think I have my flashlight anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think the flashlight yeah. that Darla had is gone. What about Wolf and Vic? Uh, Wolf doesn't have Vic? anything. There's a, there's a light on his phone, but that's about it. All right, so yeah. you're all walking by the light of a single, a camera and a single headlamp. Uh, JD, I assume you, by necessity, have to take up the front. Yeah. Um, and Reese is there uh, guiding you through the tunnels. With him as your guide, you have no trouble. He takes a very confusing series of turns and twists and crawls into tiny spaces and then out the other side. And eventually you find yourselves in a mud sort of room, a a cavern almost, with lines of sort of metal stalls with medical um, dividers, plastic dividers hanging from plastic rings, and, you know, old, ancient, rusted medical gurneys and tables with bizarre and terrifying instruments on them. None of the, the test subjects seem especially phased by this room. They walk straight through uh, and through a metal barred door on the other side. At that point, uh, Reese stops and he frantically looks around for Casey. When she arrives, uh, he goes, 
Where's the key? And she goes, key? You have the key. What do you mean? I left it for you. Oh, fuck me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so. Reese sighs deeply, bangs his head on the rusted bars of the store, squints his eyes closed, and he goes, where did you leave the key? And Casey goes, in the desk, like I always do. You mean you didn't find it? What do you mean? He goes, I had to come in this way because there were a bunch of people over there. I, I, I pick up a rock. He says rusted. Yeah, it's an old rusted, about, old school prison style door. About how far did we walk to get to here? Uh, quite a while. It was about five, six minutes. I'm just going to start beating on the hinges. I don't care how loud it is. I'm just going to start beating on the hinges of this is rusted door. Doing anything? Is there a? Is it an internal lock or is it like a like a Mickey Mouse lock? What the hell is a Mickey Mouse lock? You know that. You ever seen an old padlock? The old padlock. Oh yeah, it's an internal lock on the door. Okay. Yeah. Shit. Um, Does the door lock. still seem sturdy? Yeah, it's pretty sturdy. Uh, on the other side, you see a cell with a, a patient bed and, and a sort of side table, a toilet, and then another set of doors on the other side. Uh, I'm going to turn to Casey, and I'm going to ask her, um, what does he mean? What do you ask? Quack. Uh, just roll an investigation. In fact, all of you can roll an investigation. This investigation? Yes. Three. <laughs> Nothing. I can't find investigation. Uh, one. From a very out of it wolf. Uh, one also. This is my big boy roll. Ooh. One, two, three. What is that? Four? Yeah, that's three. more than enough. Um, clank, clank. Mason, you're like, hang on, didn't we find a key earlier? <gasps> oh, shit. Oh. oh, we did. We're the best. Can I can I can I rub on above the above, you above do. where the key goes? And with the abrasion of your your the edge of your sleeve, you reveal the number SB eighteen. Uh, Wolf, Wolf, I run over to Wolf and I grab him. And I go, "Where's the key? You had the key." Uh, what? Oh, oh, oh sorry. Uh, um, yeah, here. Get he hands it over. Man? Oh shit! Sorry. Just yeah. And he undoes the lock. The door swings open with a rusty creak. And you all pile through and find the door on the other side of the cell unlocked. Oh my Ooh. god, guys, we are so good at this. Lock it behind us, lock it behind us. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, lock it, us. lock it behind us. Uh, once everyone's through, uh, Wolf slams it and he does so. And then he just chucks the key far away from direction? the door. Well, not... Not okay, he's, he's a little fuddled right now. <laughs> All right, I don't want to assume that Wolf's going to do this. We're all just be like, no! There's the key through the door. Here you go. Why? Why? <laughs> Antonio Banderas shows up. Thank you. No, thank you. It's JD. Thank you. Well, he didn't do that, so. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, you all make it out, and uh, Casey begins sort of leading you back through. It's tiresome, all of you, with your, your various conditions and with Cleo fighting you every step of the way. Um, yes? Can I roll to find Henry? Like, just look around while we're walking to see if I see signs of a struggle. Well, you certainly won't see him on this end because okay. the crew didn't have access to the Oh, right, 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 right. Do I have any weird... Am I bleeding from my neck? Um... Yeah. yeah. Hey, he didn't. Doc. He didn't close the wound, so yeah, you were bleeding. Um, yeah, question. When I was kind of having a meltdown and looking for medical supplies, did I find Well, anything? you ran into an office, so all you found was paper. You, you you have one piece of paper sort of, like, crunched in your hand, uh, but you didn't find anything medical, no. Um, well, since I'm basically covered in blood and other things, um, I'm going to... As is, um... Blood and booze. As is, uh... Oh, God, who was with... Uh, when you threw it, it was Reese, Reese right? Reese is definitely covered. Reese, Reese is also covered in blood. Because <laughs> I'm already fucking covered in blood and goo. Uh, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna shrug off my 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 shawl, um, and I'm gonna hold it up to JD's neck, and I'm gonna be like, "Listen, I can't have you die on me because I just <laughs> no, don't want to see that." I mean, it's not gushing; it's like I a mean, paper yeah, cut. Yeah, but, yeah, but he should put pressure on that wound. 
Because listen, I, you know, emotionally, I can't you deal t- with tie it. Tie it around my neck. <laughs> if you die He's on me. Fred. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it takes you a while, but you all make it. Uh, what you find, it, it honestly resembles a prison more than any kind of hospital. Mm. Um, and uh, as you approach the stairs, you see in a very old, like a 1950s old sign that says um, high security ward. Mm. Um, and then you climb yourselves up a, a set of stairs and find yourself in a, a very old-fashioned 70s lobby with sunburnt orange, like, linen chairs with wooden arms and old chestnut wood desks in a rather mid-century way and black uh, sort of boards with the little white letters directing you to various offices and wards. And uh, on one side, a line of gloriously unlocked double doors. Out, 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 out. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna push him open. Yeah, uh, Vic is. Yeah, Vic doesn't want to. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! How are we going to explain the children we found? Okay. We're so gonna explain the children. There were homeless found. vagrants. Yeah. Okay, fine. Well, nice start. We we'll we'll take care of ourselves. We have uh, we have to stay off the grid. No, honey. What we need to do is. You can't just. There, we took no, a long no, drive no. to get here, and we just can't leave you to walk somewhere. Where the hell are you going to walk? You can't escape on foot. So what you need to do is you need to come with us. We're going to tell them that we found you, and we're going to drop you off at the nearest town. Mm. I don't even know what that town is. We're going to make it up. What about him? She motions to Reese mm. covered in blood. He's with you. What right? about me? <laughs> I don't have any shoes on. <laughs> I'm also covered in no. blood, but goddamn it, I'm like one of the stars of this show, so I can throw a hissy fit, and then we're gonna give you a ride back to town. So that's what's gonna happen. And still shaken by the things she's experienced, she can't bring herself to turn down help again. So, she relents. So we will drop okay. you all at the the nearest town at the nearest bus station, and then you guys can get where you're gonna go. Do you, by any chance, think your character might have packets of stage blood on him? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can we can we make up a story about him wasting all of your stage blood? I mean, I have I have, I have three bags of blood. Yeah. Okay, we'll call it stage blood, and okay. we're gonna break a couple of those bags so that we can say that he broke your stage blood. Also, just for uh, just for my own personal uh, just. Peace of mind. Is that going to get infected, or is he going to start eating some of us by the end of the night? Would I know? She looks at it, at you and, and at the rest of the party, and she goes, "Why do you think I know?" Hold on, because you're around. You're you're vampire, right? No. I'm not. Oh, I'm not. Okay, sorry. Didn't mean to hit I don't. There. I don't know what we are. But we're not them. I. Yeah. He looks at me and he goes. You didn't eat any blood, did you? Mm-hmm. Then you're fine. They do this all the time. I've been biting Reese for months, and he's fine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, when I saw an interview with a vampire, yeah. and when it ever came out in the 90s. What are you rolling? I, was, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to use Unseen Sense to know about um, if sure. he would be contaminated, but... I'm pretty sure you need to bite his wrist after he bites your wrist and then take that vampire blood into your I don't know how this works but is that bullshit? that's how that's how it looks like it works that's um, what I want to know now is that bullshit um okay your unseen sense rule uh well she's not wrong <laughs> if TV says anything right would she never know but more or less uh for now we're fine everybody needs to get out of here uh, I, I I suggest that we just tell Brad that the set's contaminated and we can't stay here. Um, I'm not going to stay here. Yeah, I think uh, I think the plan where JD's <clears throat> blood none of packets, us should stay here. Yeah, it'll be explained to me. Well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the PA Henry, remember? Oh, we the couldn't tell him eaten. that. We lost contact with him when we ran into all the homeless vagrants that had made a tent city down in the basement. 
right? Well, we can take JD in for medical treatment, and that's Casey, at least a trip as into you town. All discuss this. She looks around and she goes, "Does anybody have a picture of him?" No. Uh, I don't think so. Well, staff probably would. You know, is there any chance I think I might have recorded him? Very likely. Hey. In the early parts of my camera. He was there he when you first went into the tunnel. Well, hold exactly. on. Edited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Can I just roll back to yeah, the early parts? Rolling of... a lot. Yeah, you can search. Go ahead and do a do an investigation <laughs> check. See if you can find footage of Henry. Two zeros. Yeah, Two Wolf uh, has just quietly taken Thank a seat. You. Two successes. All right, you find it. You show her. And it's, it's you know, he's kind of off to the side. It's not on purpose, but you manage to pause it on a freeze frame that does show his face. And... Mm-hmm. To your shock and, and extreme disquiet, you see the girl in front of you transform into that face. What the hell? Like you're just her face changing? <laughs> her her whole body. And that would be an integrity, folks. <laughs> yeah, no joke. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. I'm good, I got one. I am. Oh my god. So not bothered by this. <laughs> I wrote you, actu- you actually think um, this is cool. John didn't roll a single failure. He rolled uh, six dice and they were all successes. Jesus. Oh. I got four successes. Go ahead and take a little well. PowerPoint back, sir. Do I. Something about this is so extreme and so bizarre that it actually makes you feel better because you realize you're not crazy. This is actually happening. Can I. Wolf stands up. And you know that really unsettling laugh people get when they just kind of snap a little bit? He starts doing that. Uh, any chance I might know what the hell she is? Uh, you can roll an unseen sense. Yeah. I, don't I, I was going to tell you, but you used it on Darla. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Four. Four successes. <laughs> um, you don't have a word for it, uh, but you, you think distinctly of Oddly enough, you it reminds you of the fly. It reminds you of, of these sort of David Cronenberg type movies of humans that sort of become non-human things. Uh, and you just get the sense that she was human and she is still fundamentally human. But there are just some parts about her now that aren't right. The main thing you pick up on is the simple fact that she is quintessentially not a vampire. So, how long were you with us if you are Henry? No, I think she... She's (laughs) not Henry, dude. This is what I think. (laughs) No, it's Henry. Uh, Look, I'm just trying to get out of here alive, okay? So... Dude, if this guy is missing, <laughs> and they're going to no. go down there. This, that, yeah, dude. Is that why you were so unfazed? Because you were like, wow, Henry was really cool. No, no what I, this, is, this is how that train of thought went for me. It was, oh, this person was disguised as a crew member the whole time, and they were trying to get help. So they encouraged us down into this area that we might not have gone to. Wolf is laughing <laughs> even harder now. He's Yeah, he's taken out a smashed pack of cigarettes with shaking hands and he's lit one up. You're like, <laughs> you think any of this was planned, man? Out of, out of you sure mouth, did. Man, out of you're delusional. The same sort of bratty teenage voice that you've been listening to all night. Like, seriously, can we just get out of here? Because if they know that this guy is, like, missing, they're just gonna go look for him. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm not, look, it's not like a whole thing. I don't have the, ugh. I just, I need to, <laughs> you guys are worried that they're going to look for this guy. I can be that guy. Hey, it works for me. Let's go. Let's, we need, let's everybody, we're taking JD into town for medical treatment. Yes. Does that sound good? Why, why, why yeah. do you do that? 
Because we need a cover for leaving. Why? Sure. There's vagrants. Somebody's covered in blood. Mm-hmm. It's stage blood, but you got hurt. You, you got you bit in the fucking hospital, neck. Right? We don't actually go to the Ask hospital. Ask questions. We don't actually go there. We just then, leave. Yeah, we, we, we can just leave then. Listen. All right. Holy shit. You guys are terrible fucking Listen, liars. What we can do is we can say a homeless man bit him. And that we need to go to the hospital so he doesn't get rabies or whatever. So... And then, when we are taking these kids to the hospital, maybe they can sneak out and then go to a bus station. Wolf points to Darla. See? She's Isn't a good like liar. Dead at night and nobody here? <laughs> it's a hospital. There's gonna be someone there. Well, it's a good mm-hmm. question. As you look around, you can see the sort of pinky purple hues of early, early dawn. The sun is not up, but you are approaching daylight. Just... And as you take stock of where you are, you find yourselves... Roughly, you know, a, a half a mile away from the facility where you were filming earlier. The trucks have all vacated. Um, but Wait, did they leave us? Yes. Yes. At midnight, they the proper they crew went home and they left you guys though. there to finish out. Oh, okay. The investigation. I thought that the, the, the skeleton crew that had been with us, like, had left us. Just... <laughs> okay. And all that is left is a single van. Uh, and as you walk closer, you see... Uh, sleeping PA, the same one that drove you there, with his his baseball cap tipped low over his face, snoring in the driver's seat. I knock on the uh, on the window. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm sorry. Oh, don't... hey, and and muffled through the window, he says hey, and he gives you a peace sign, and he he you know opens the door. <laughs> Tony, no Vic, no Vic, Vic like like brings JD into view and is just kind of like, hey, uh, one of us is uh, is real hurt. We need to get to a hospital. Oh my gosh, do you have the tetanus shot? Are, are you going to get, like, I'm like gangrene? Sure sure well, he might fine. have rabies, so we need to get him to the hospital. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, Tony, let's go. We yeah, go okay, to yeah. Hospital. And he unlocks so, the door and all of you pile in. Yeah. yeah. So what I want you to do is I want you to radio production and tell them that you're going to have to up my hazard pay. Firstly, firstly, we're going to uh, talk about y- this. You know, um, I think this might be a little above my pay grade. And secondly, you're going you're gonna to floor it. To the hospital, okay? And Casey in the back, trying not to draw attention to herself, goes, the hospital? You want to go to the hospital um, can I covered just, in blood? Just be like, And he looks, how am I going to go? Just going to fucking die. Yeah, then we ditch him. <laughs> and, uh, oh, he's going to drive us to the hospital. So he, he's, as, we, as you all argue, he's driving you there. There's nothing complicated <laughs> about this. No, it's going to be fine. Don't worry. Here's All the right. thing. Okay. What up? Uh, I'm going <laughs> to... Hold on. I'm going to... No, 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 no. This is in character right now. Hey. Uh, you're, you're worried that you're going to get... Well, this is all going to get reported to the police, right? Yeah. Here's the thing. And don't ask me how I know this. All the all that a hospital needs to know is what whatever happened to you. You don't need to tell them something that's going to get you arrested. Uh, and Sir Darla sort of leans over and says, hey, go ahead and talk at full volume just for the microphone. Oh, uh, well, we'll say he put his head, his earbuds in and he's not listening to you Okay. <laughs> Listen, like, uh, I know that, that you don't want to go to the hospital because you don't want to have to lie to doctors, I guess. But mm-hmm. like, but like, seriously, dude, I don't know what the hell was A, in the water we stood in, in that guy's mouth. I don't know what vampirism is. No, you listen to me. Don't don't open your mouth. You listen to me. I think that you should at least get that shit washed and stitched. And while they're doing that for you, we can say a crazy homeless person bit you. Hear me out. It happens all the time in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, then we, while they're distracted with you, can sneak the kids out. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to tell them that somebody at the asylum sleeping there bit me and then that gets reported and then what happens when that gets reported a bunch of people go to the asylum nothing <laughs> yeah Darla's gonna be you know well, you might get a cop man. that gets sent out there but that's not like mm-hmm. people haven't squatted there before that's not really a big a deal it's a big empty building just it's not empty fucking... says Reese. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, full exactly. of dangerous vampires and those 
Or whoever those people were. But those people are in the basement. Well, they're going to have to get out, aren't they? And we don't know how long it's going to take them. We just locked them in there. We could have just stole the stupid PA, drive us to our fucking hotel, and done whatever the fuck we want. Well, you can still do that. Do you want me to just tap the PA on the shoulder and say, hey, turns out he's fine. Turns out he's not bleeding from a, from a hobo neck bite. I'm yeah, we'll just really do. not bleeding very much. In fact, it's as he not. checks it, it is totally scabbed over at this point. Hmm. Um, listen, okay, I'm definitely, I can't speak for everyone, but me, personally, I'm not exactly in a great headspace right now. If you don't want to go to the hospital, let's not go to the hospital. I have a fucking PhD, I can look over whatever you need. I need a cigarette, and I need to breathe. So, JD, what do you want exactly? Okay, and I reach around Vic because did I get thrown no, in the trunk time again? No, this you were sure to get in the front passenger seat. Are our guests in the trunk? Yeah, the guests are in the trunk. All right, I whap the uh, PA on the shoulder. He was Henry. Tony. Not Tony, Henry. The, yep. uh, the driver. Yep. To- Tony. Tony perks up Tony. like he was almost Tony. falling asleep at the wheel anyway. He looks over, he pulls out his headphones, he goes, yeah, what's up? Sorry about that. Hey, man. No, I'm, yeah, I'm don't awake. Worry I'm about awake. Blood. I promise. Yeah, I'm, there's I'm no, awake. There's no, there's no blood or anything. It's all stopped. It's fine. Just go. I've had my shots. Go yeah. to the hotel. Oh, thank God. I wasn't sure if we had show insurance, he says, as you drive into the sunrise. Oh, that's <laughs> promising. And Wolf just kind of sits back in his chair, rolls the window down, and lights up another <laughs> cigarette. They're all crushed. None of them actually so, light that well. So you all sort of drive into the morning you go past the gate and he hops out just as when you came in unlocks the gate swings the gate open lets you out again and uh you all go about your morning on the long drive back so as you all sit there taking in what you've experienced trying to make sense of it trying to figure out what you're going to do next You all sort of stare out the windows and watch the wheat fields go by. A kaleidoscope, you all know, is a tube that distorts vision within a combination of darkness and reflection. The color shards appear in a certain pattern, and they appear that way until something causes it to shake. And then it changes to a different pattern, and even if it remains that way for some time, that doesn't mean that at any time, it can't change again. And as you all shuffle out of the van once you arrive at your hotel, you find yourselves in a changed world, made of the same shapes and the same colors, seen through the same narrow tube of human perception, but different, wider, more dangerous. And that's the world that you all greet with a bold face as you collapse into a motel room together. What do you want to do now? Well, um, before before anything, um, obviously we're going to have to sneak those kids up, right? Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take yeah. them and I'm going to let them clean themselves up so that they're not covered in blood. And I, since I'm a, I'm, I'm a girl and there's two girls there... I'm going to try and find some clothes that aren't scrubs. Hey, look, if you guys want to talk about this all later, I'll explain it as best I can. But you've all just witnessed something that I've seen, at least a few things I've seen before. Are you saying this before I take them upstairs? or? Yeah, they, well, I want, want to catch you. Oh, okay. Wait. I need to... Somebody... Needs to go drop off what bullshit footage we took in the first half of this and yeah. get production off our bass so nobody's answering questions. I thought that wouldn't be a big deal, but JD brought up a good point. We don't need people asking questions right now. Right. So, if anyone wants to come with me, I'm gonna take off. I'll, I will no, be I'll, back. I wanna, I wanna just clarify something. Did you say 
I, you're talking about it like, like you kind of already knew this was a thing. You like you knew that 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 the werewolves exist and vampires hunt human beings. Yeah. Yes. So you just you already knew that. Yes. And you didn't bother okay. to say anything when this started happening because every single one of you would have given the exact same response I would have before I knew any of this. That it's your insane and nothing you say makes sense right now. Because in that moment, nothing we saw made sense right then. So, I couldn't help you that way. The only way I could help anyone was to get us out alive. Now, things might make sense in this tortured, strange way, but... The only way I make sense of any of this is with this thing. I record. I'm waving my camera around. I try and study it and then make sense of all of it. But the most of what I saw tonight didn't make any sense. And I really feel for all you guys. So um, if you don't have it, I'm just going to pull out, like grab a one of those little cards on the side of the the bedroom tables uh, that I leave out and I'm just going to scribble my phone number I'm not going to dump you guys and I know a guy we can talk to if you don't want to believe me on all this but I'll be I, back I was wanting to ask you anyway it seems like you kind of got what was going on I, well, mean, I mean like go ahead and drop the drop the stuff off we can talk about this later but can I look at the you know I say I want to take a shower and I want to go with you to meet whoever the hell this is right because I ain't sleeping I'll well, explain on the way for you what, your, what I'm going to do is go I'm going to get these kids cleaned up and yeah. I'm going to find the nearest bus station yeah. uh, and then I'm going to get somebody to drive or walk my happy ass over there and make sure that they get where they need to go yeah all right, because hey. I think that is the most immediate problem here. Mason, before um, you go, well, I'm Sas- waiting on him. Is I'll Sas- sit and talk if you want. Is Sasquatch real? I'm gonna go kick the PA out of the van <laughs> so that we can take the, the van. The van is actually um, it's it's vacant. He wants it's to vacant. go. He's been awake all night too. He went immediately yeah. to go to bed. Yeah, and uh, she's like the the him. film motel or whatever. Yeah, well, a film production crew will rent out several rooms. Okay. In the hotel. Okay. When they're on location, uh, um, but but yeah. Is so Sasquatch real? <laughs> I'm serious. Is Sasquatch real? So it's... yeah, I I really want to hear what you're gonna have to tell us, and we're gonna have to have a talk about it. But firstly, I need to make yeah. care of these kids, and I may make sure that they get where they need to be um, as inconspicuously as possible. So let me take care of them. Yeah, you yeah. Guys let me let me help with off, that, and then we're gonna have yeah. a powwow in my room. All right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so I'm gonna sounds take like a plan. I'm just going to sit and decompress while JD goes to the shower and decompresses. I'm also, I'm also going to do the, the, the very stereotypical check the, the thing, see if he left the keys and the, and the fucking blinder flap. He did. Okay. <laughs> JD, are you going to have like a cry in the shower? Are you going to have a cry in the shower moment? No, I think I'm fine actually. <laughs> I felt pretty it wasn't good. very traumatizing. <laughs> I felt pretty good after I got bit. kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that's the plan. So uh, in the in the meantime, yeah. uh, uh, Vic is probably going to approach Wolf and just say, "Hey, let let me know if okay. This this definitely isn't a good time, but you're 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 a psychologist, right? Yeah." Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we talk about this later? He, oh, he nods. Hey, you. But, like, it... He shakes his head. Don't. It's pro bono. Okay, cool. All right. Why yeah. pro bono? Never mind. I should shut up. Yeah. <laughs> A man <laughs> just died, Deanna. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael got separated from so... his sense today. <laughs> it's a little bit too real right now. Yeah, Wolf is going to uh, find like a bench or something. He's going to light up a cigarette again. 
um, really, really mad at himself for not having his weed. And when Darla heads out, uh, he's gonna run up to, uh, uh, not, not Chloe. What was the other girl's name? Casey. He's gonna run up to Casey. Hey, hey. Yeah? Um, uh, he's gonna reach into his pocket. Listen, um, look, I, I don't really know what you've all been through. I don't, I'm not even gonna pretend to understand it, but, um, and he's gonna reach into his wallet and he's gonna pull out, uh, the $900 stipend they gave him to buy supplies and he's gonna hold that out to her with a sticky note with his cell number on it. She wordlessly reaches out her hands and she clutches this wad of hundreds and a sticky note like a precious thing. And she looks at you. Use it to take care of yourselves. Uh, okay. Thank you. And um, if you need anything, I... Uh... I, I got a sister about your age. Uh, if you need anything, just call, okay? <laughs> Thank you. And she bursts into tears, and, and she clutches at you in a hug. A desperate hug. And she 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 can't seem to... Um, he returns the hug. He returns the hug and does that manly, I'm not gonna cry, sniffle. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what to do. Is there anywhere you can go? You, I, I'm, I'm more than willing to get you whatever bus tickets you guys need. Do you have? Do you know of anywhere you can go? I, my, my, my parents live in Wisconsin. Uh, oh my god! I can't. Well, what if I eat them? I can't come back here. And at this point, Reese sort of takes her, uh, takes his hand on her shoulder, and she goes, "We'll figure it out. It's okay." She goes, "What about your parents?" And he sort of makes a face. And goes, well, I haven't really talked to him in a while. Uh, oh, God, am I still enrolled in college? Oh, God, how much have my bills been up? <laughs> and uh, he just sort of looks around and he's like, okay, we'll start there. I mean, I used to have an apartment. And we could We could go there. And she sort of looks at the bills and looks up at you and she nods. She's like, okay. Okay, yeah. Where, where is that? He goes, Cedar Rapids? Shrugs. She goes, she looks at him kind of like, wry with his narrowed eyes. What kind of college is in Cedar Rapids? <laughs> he goes, Cedar Rapids Community College. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the moment, this, this camaraderie between them seems to break up the, 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 the feeling a bit. And she kind of laughs, and he laughs, and he takes her hand very carefully and peels the money clutched in her in her palm and, and sort of tucks it gently in her pocket, and, and they follow Darla to the bus stop. Um, as you've gotten further and further away from the asylum, Cleo seems to have reverted back to this the state she normally is in. It's far from what you would consider a fully functional human, but she's no longer ripping at her own flesh. She's managing to walk on two feet, although only with the assistance of one of her friends. Um, but at the very least, uh, her, her face is calm and passive, and she follows happily along with her, uh, her trusted comrades. And uh, you all make it to the bus stop unimpeded, uh, in the early morning, the town is all but deserted, and no one witnesses you. Bring her there and leave her there. You um, have anything to say? Um, Darla sort of looks at them and um, sort of uh, crosses her arm a little bit, and she says, "Well, I, I understand you had that uh, real emotional moment with Wolf earlier, and and that was all well and good and and, and stuff, and uh I want to let you know you can call me, too, if you need it. <laughs> uh, if you can't get a hold of him for whatever reason. Uh, so I'm going to scrub, like, scribble, take the back of his business card and sort of scribble my number on it. Um, and listen, don't hesitate to call me if you need anything. Seriously, though, 
I don't know what I can do, but certainly I can I can help you out. Okay. Okay. She says. But thank thank you. But uh, but you you know we got your back and and really we just want you to 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 be in a better place and I think that this is gonna go towards it. So um, don't hesitate to call me. Okay. Okay. Thanks. She mm-hmm. says and sort of wraps and, and snuggles into your hoodie that, that's draped around her and leans against Reese and they sort of quietly wait. Um, what do you and, have to And say? Uh, Vic is going to approach and he's, he says, I don't give out my personal number. I want to, like, wish you both luck and if I, I have, I, I have like an idea on what to do, and just in case nothing else works out, but uh, that that whole Grand Rapids thing sounds like it's pretty promising. Casey kind of rolls her eyes and is like, "Yeah, Grand Rapids." And uh, I mean, I've been there. It's it's all right. And uh, uh, Reese <laughs> to her side quietly goes, "Go Cougars." <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't follow sports. <laughs> Darlene's just going to look exasperatedly at the sky and then goes, so where do we buy bus tickets? And sort of walk them over there and, and figure out. Uh, you've already done that. Oh, There's a kiosk that. next oh, to okay. it. It's a little weird to do that after you've already said goodbye. Oh, I thought, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, then she's going to go, well, that's obviously our cue to leave. So. <laughs> so. Vic, the uh, scene ender. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, let us know you get you get out safe. Send us a to give us a call. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. And I grab Vic by the shoulder and march him. Down. I'm, I'm moving on my own. <laughs> so uh, across the city in a passenger van, uh, Vic and uh, or not Vic, uh, JD and Mason, uh, you all find yourselves um, looking at the. Uh, at the video camera, trying to sort through what you will and won't reveal to the production. Because the production manager is, is sleeping there. In, the person you turned this into is sleeping there in the motel. Um, well, the fight's out. Do we... Well, we I mean, you should cut it before we go in the basement. You should cut it before the werewolf shows up. Yeah, we can't really explain that. Because nobody else was there with us. So they we can say that there was some kind of electric interference, a magnet, some crap. The tape got erased. I don't care what we say. But at least we can't show them that tape. Just give them fuzz. Yeah. Say we went to review the tape. Cuts out there. Well, we can't. We can't come back either way. This is the end. Because we can't explain. Like, we got out, but we can't explain Henry away. They'll come ask him. So unless we're gonna go back, we don't know what happened to Henry. Unless we go back and find him, we can just say Henry left while we were still filming, and we thought he already went back. Maybe somebody, somebody who's a little bit better with the words is gonna need to say that. I'll say it. We are. We're not there. You're not there. Yeah, you're not there. Oh right. It's just unity. Fair enough. But (laughs) I was gonna say something similar, which is just Uh, he he up and left in the middle of the night. He left us. He got spooked. I don't know what happened to him. We haven't seen him since. Not exactly renowned for bravery. We so. got separated when we went to the basement and haven't seen him since. That's the truth. Yeah. Well, that's easier than vanishing. So, hey, let's see why you want to play it. Let's play it. Uh, I'm going to cut here right before we go down. You, uh, As you're, you're scrolling through, you do actually find the point in the tape when uh, Henry closes the door on you all and waves cheekily and briskly walks back up the stairs. Yeah. You, in fact, have evidence supporting your claim. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm just going to... Can I keep the latter half of the tape, or do I have to erase it to separate it? If you take it to a computer, then you can save a file separately and then erase it, but you cannot separate the tape on the camera itself. I have a laptop. Can I do that? With sure. my laptop. You absolutely can. Okay, I want to do that with my laptop before we go. All right, so you spend the next hour or so copying over the footage and making duplicates, 
putting the files that you want to turn in back on the card, trying to make it all look mm-hmm. untampered with. And uh, at all told, you have a card that's good to go. And uh, uh, right as you finish, the other half of your party returns. Okay. All right. Well, we're ready. We got the tape, hey. and it's set up. It seems believable. And when it comes to Henry, we're going to tell him what good. we saw. Good, good. Which is, he let us into the basement, and then we didn't see him again. Hey, we don't know that Henry's dead, though. I gotta say, I know he got probably mauled by a werewolf, but that doesn't mean that he's deceased. Does so. make sense? Who knows? So. We know we didn't see him again, and that's what we're going to say. Okay. Um, I I'm mean, just saying, it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, but we'll just tell him what, what actually happened in that regard. Um, so, I guess we just gotta hand this shit over, right? It's ready. One of you two want to take it? I'm um, my, my way with words. <coughs> uh, I could, I can do it. I oh, by the it. way, um, take a willpower point back, Wolf, for being kind to the, oh, the children. Oh, thanks. Nice. By the way, uh, I'm going to consider my one dot of resources burnt, so okay. we'll have to talk about hey, that. Did later. I get a willpower? I was nice. Yeah. I gave him a shower. What's your virtue? Uh, uh, my virtue. At the moment. I wrote it down the other day. <laughs> uh, so Wolf's gonna take the tape and he's gonna. Hey, uh, before I. Did anyone get his last name? Are you talking about the director of cinematography Hen- or Henry? No, no, no. I know, I know him. I, I mean Henry. We know him as Henry, so it really shouldn't matter. It oh. does matter. We don't. He He's may not dead. be dead. Well, Henry vanished. How how dead he might be doesn't change how much of his name we know. Yeah. I'm just saying. Shit like that matters. <laughs> and Wolf's gonna fuck off to deliver right. the footage. Just him? Unless anyone's coming with. Uh, uh, Vic's gonna go back to his hotel room. But well, we're gonna sit and chat about Oh, no, that was going to be with Will. Yeah, I'd like, if you guys have questions for me, I'd like everybody to be there. I don't want to say it twice. Okay. Well, it is just down the hall, and the production manager is asleep, so you pretty much just uh, keep it, um, you, you sort of knock on the door, and she sort of groggily answers, slides open the door, and takes over the cartridge she was expecting you. No questions were asked at all. She just closes the door and goes back to bed. I head back to the room. Well, okay. let's, let's go ahead and get the get the questions out of the way. Well, I'll answer them in the van, but not here. So, if you guys want to get back on the road, no, we're me. gonna sleep because we, well, oh yeah, we've been up all night. Right, this hotel is the same. Okay, yeah, go back to the hotel room. All right, so we're I'm assuming in my hotel room because that's mm-hmm. what I said. Uh, um, I don't know everything, but what do you want to know? So. How how did you how did you first find out that this stuff was real? Somebody tried to kill me, and a werewolf saved my life. And that's about as much of that I'd like to cover. So okay, <laughs> it's 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 not a that was top, in character, by the way. It, it's it's not something I like covering. It really isn't. But everything else, more than happy to share. Is this normal? As normal as normal gets. No! (laughs) As normal as it gets to be the lion your whole life and then find out suddenly that you're the mouse. (sighs) Yeah. No, I meant like fucking underground labs where they're, uh, I don't know, zombifying kids. That's going to go with the hard no. No. Anything but normal. E- even even by the standards of what I know, that's a bit extreme. And I don't that, know anything. And and to prove it, I'll explain a bit. The werewolves would certainly be there to correct what was going wrong. How, what does that mean? Werewolves, as far as I understand, are here on this planet to keep the spirits of this world in order. And that place was monstrously distorted in every sense of the word. And uh, they were there to try and fix that. 
Um, clearly, that didn't work for them. And uh, as close to fixing that as we got was getting out of there. So, and, But you knew something about this beforehand? Yeah. I figure if I'm on a, a ghost show, I get to make money, I get to travel, and I get to maybe see something legitimate. I got way more than I bargained for tonight. I didn't... Well, that answers my next question. Like I, I'm Look, I don't want to go in there and see shit like that. I want to do a little bit of research. I want to have some questions answered. And I want to know more. Because this is the most dangerous shit I've ever seen in my life. Look, I, I, I grew up hunting, right? I, I've, I've killed animals, but... But now we're the animal, and that's terrifying. So I need to know about this. And this didn't help. We just came in, and everything could have killed us. I need to I need to go over this tape. And I, I need to find something useful out of all this. Does it happen a lot? Like, you got saved by a werewolf. No. You kind of got saved by a werewolf again. It's just, so how many times has something like this happened to you? Two. This is some sort of good fortune on my part. So what are we going to do if this happens again? Because we're, we're actively going into places that are haunted or whatever. I mean, what are we going to do if we run into other real shit? Well, I was hoping to avoid this, but we might need to arm ourselves. Seriously arm ourselves. With what? With every dollar we have. And I know a guy we can talk to about. I didn't take everything he said seriously, but maybe I need to. What sort of things we need to protect ourselves from that kind of shit? Oh, God damn it. You You let those kids run off with that gun. Fuck me. Did we? Yes. Jesus. They, (laughs) Darla, they need it more than us. We're going to fight fucking, I don't even know, Wendigos or whatever the fuck. And they took that gun. You know Van Helsing? <laughs> no. You talked about this guy you're going to talk to before. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Buckaroo. He's my roommate, Charlie. Your roommate? Charlie. <laughs> is is, uh, the, is well, I the, think we need to sit down and have a, a chat. That's the name. Charles. Is, is he the werewolf <laughs> that saved you? He's my roommate, Charlie. Who? Is, yeah. uh, he's not he is a very, werewolf. He's a very private person. If you guys want to... But he's not a werewolf. Charlie's Charlie, man. He, he's, he's not... Look, hold on. You guys really want to have a talk? Yes. Yeah. It's just a weird we situation. We should probably talk to Charlie. I'll be right there. <laughs> you can pull your phone. Oh, hey, man, what's up? Hey, <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, uh, some shit happened. Put it on speaker. Some shit? shit happened on the shoot, and uh, well, yeah, you were shooting the shit. What do you expect, brother? <laughs> werewolves, vampires. Oh shit! Uh, human beings that can shape shift, and a lot of people saw it, and they have a lot of questions that I can't answer. Can I bring them by? Hell no, you can't bring a bite. Put him on speaker. I put him on speaker. This is Charlie. Yeah, uh, Charlie. Hey, yeah, this is, uh, this is JD. Um, you can, uh, explain what the fuck is going on. Uh, hi, this is Vic Cooper. Hi, Vic Cooper. Hi, uh, are you... Wait, are you that Vic Cooper? Yeah. Oh uh, my god, I'm such a big fan. He didn't tell you that he was working on you. Sure? <laughs> Which, hold on, hold on, wait. Just real quick, guys, I need a moment. No, what do you, what do you I, know me from? No, you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth right now. There is a time and a place, Vic Cooper, and it is not right now. Fine. Can you do the dino voice? Hey, you are Charlie. not going to do Vex Rafter. You Charlie. are not. Charlie, would yes. you like to meet Mr. Vic Cooper? 
Oh, I want to buy some silver bullets from you. Oh, no can do with the silver bullets, brother. Sorry, I don't sell things that hurt me. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, are you a werewolf? No, no, I'm totally not a werewolf. What, so what, what, are, I don't what, uh, what, are we, what are we talking about here? No, put Mason on the phone. Hey, bro, hi. I'm on the phone, it's on uh, speaker, sorry. Charlie. Uh, we've talked about how this works. Yeah. Here, James <laughs> wants to talk. I'm not an idiot, son. I meant talking to you personally. I didn't sign up for any of this shit. Is that really Vic Cooper? <laughs> That's really Vic Cooper. The Vic Cooper. Oh wow. my god, get off his dick. Can we talk about the Super Bowl? Billy isn't going to believe this. this I talked to of Vic fame Cooper. was the best decision I made. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on, Wolf. Uh, hi. The, uh, this. This is Dr. Wolf. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, look, dude, I'm I'm not going to try to powder your ass or anything with this stuff. This is this is way above all of our pay grades and truth be told, I'm more than a little shell-shocked. I definitely need some weed and I need a dick to suck. I need those two things. But right now, Hang on, I just got to ask you? like <laughs> 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 we're well, how far away from now we're, is not no, the time there's no, <laughs> there's no way we, we parked the RV too far away from my job right well you, you parked it uh, God, yeah you're flexible you parked like, it roughly, roughly 25 minutes from where you're at right now <laughs> Charlie I'm like 30 minutes out man you don't If we can get to the pleasantries after the conversation, sure, we'll come by. You can listen to Mr. Dino, and you can... Bring Modelo. Oh, boy. Okay, we'll bring Modelo. We're gonna it's come, big... and you're gonna explain yeah. some goddamn shit. Alright, yeah, see you in a minute. Bye, buddy. You didn't tell me your friends were gonna be this cool. Click. And with on that note, we will... Okay! Stoner werewolves. And on the note of Stoner Werewolves, we'll end our session for the night. Oh, Lord. Did we. Are you a prostitute now? Is that how this works? (laughs) Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell is created and produced by Buckle Nagel and Stephen Pope. The players are Garrett Schmigel as Vic, Deanna Venable as Darla, Michael Morris as JD, Stephen Pope as James Wolfe, and John Tompkins as Mason with Buckle Nagel running the game. Hunter the Vigil 2nd Edition is produced and published by Onyx Path Publishing. Find us online at Uncanny Show on Twitter and www.uncannyvalleyshow.com. Make sure you check out Wild Cards, Experience Pointers, and other Saving Throw Show productions on the Saving Throw Network. And hey, have a good night. <laughs>